Hi all, welcome to the ninth lecture. The most characteristic property of gases is that their molecules lie far apart from one another and are in continuous rapid motion. Each molecule therefore leads almost an independent existence. This is particularly so when the temperature is high and pressure is low. However, as the temperature of a gas is lower, the kinetic energy of the molecule decreases. The volume occupied by the gas also decreases. At a sufficiently low temperature, some of the slow moving molecules cannot resist the force of attraction and they come closer and closer and ultimately the gas changes to liquid state. The liquefaction of gases results from a decrease of temperature. Increase of pressure also has the effect of bringing gaseous molecules closer and closer to one another due to decrease in volume. This is an additional helpful factor in converting a gas into liquid. Thus, increase of pressure and decrease of temperature both tend to cause liquefaction of gases. The effect of temperature, however, is more important than that of pressure because for each gas, there is a certain temperature above which it cannot be liquefied, no matter how high the pressure may be applied. This temperature is known as the critical temperature. Thus, the critical temperature of a gas may be defined as that temperature above which a gas cannot be liquefied, howsoever high the pressure may be. It is represented as Tc and for carbon dioxide, the critical temperature is 31.1 degrees Celsius. This means that it is not possible to liquefy carbon dioxide above 31.1 degrees Celsius by any means. At the critical temperature, a certain pressure is needed to liquefy the gas. It is known as critical pressure. That is, critical pressure is the pressure of the gas at its critical temperature. It is denoted by Pc and for carbon dioxide, the critical pressure is 72.9 atmosphere at critical temperature. The critical temperature of oxygen is minus 118 degrees Celsius and that of hydrogen is minus 240 degrees Celsius. These gases therefore cannot be liquefied at ordinary temperature so that they are known as permanent gases. The critical pressures are 50.1 atmospheres and 12.8 atmospheres respectively. Next, there is one more critical constant which is the critical volume. It is the volume occupied by one mole of a gas at its critical temperature and critical pressure. It is represented as Vc and we have some values for Vc for carbon dioxide 940 ml per mole, oxygen is 78.2 and hydrogen is 61.5 at, at its critical temperature and critical pressure. These are important critical constants for gases. The importance of critical temperature of a gas was first discovered by T. Andrew in his experiment on pressure oleum relationship or isotherms of carbon dioxide gas at a series of temperatures. These isotherms are shown here. Consider the first isotherm at the lowest temperature 13.1 degrees Celsius. 
the point a represents carbon dioxide in the gaseous state occupying a certain volume and a certain pressure on increasing the pressure its volume diminishes as indicated by the curve ab at b which represents a pressure less than 50 49.8 liquefaction of gas commences and thereafter a rapid decrease in volume you can see a rapid decrease in volume at constant pressure at the same pressure 49.8 itself there is a rapid decrease in volume as more and more gas molecules converted into the liquid state at c the gas becomes completely liquefied now as the liquid is only slightly compressible further increase of pressure produces only a very small decrease in volume this is shown by a steep line cd which is almost vertical liquid is less compressible so that as pressure increases the line will, will be almost vertical thus along the curve ab carbon dioxide exists as gas along bc it exists as partly as gas and partly as liquid while along cd it exists entirely as liquid it may also be noted that a considerable decrease in volume this is represented by bc takes place when the gas changes into the liquid state at constant pressure the other isotherm ehgh you can see at 21.5 degrees celsius shows a similar behavior this is the part ehgh here the liquefaction commences at a higher pressure than the first high pressure nearly 16 and the horizontal portion is g representing decrease in volume become smaller as compared to the former at still higher temperatures the horizontal portion of the curve become shorter and shorter until at point x at third which is the where the temperature is 31.1 degree celsius that curve temperature is 31.1 degree celsius it reduces to a point x which is the critical temperature at which the gas pass into liquid state steadily above 31.1 degree celsius the isotherm is continuous there is no evidence for liquefaction at all and it is concluded that if the temperature of carbon dioxide is above 31.1 degree celsius it cannot be liquefied no matter how high the pressure may be he called 31.1 degree celsius as the critical temperature of carbon dioxide since then other gases have been found to behave similarly a careful examination of the isotherm shows that it is possible to convert liquid carbon dioxide into gas and vice versa gaseous carbon dioxide into liquid without any discontinuity that is without having more than one phase present at any time on joining the ends of the horizontal portion of the various isotherms a boundary curve c g x f b 
represented by the dotted line is obtained where x is the at the top lies the critical point within this area you know now you know both liquid and gaseous state can coexist but outside this area either liquid or gaseous state alone can exist suppose a certain volume of carbon dioxide yes that i can represent in the uh, isotherm of 13.1 13.1 degree it is heated a certain volume x is heated at constant volume three temperature at which the pressure increases to a point y constant volume means the volume is not has any change and uh, pressure only increases and temperature also increases that is heated at a here you can, you can see for this uh, from this isotherm that the um, temperature increases along this way also the pressure also increases and we are heating it in a constant volume temperature and pressure increases to a point y it the point y lying above the critical pressure of the gas critical pressure and critical temperature lie above the critical pressure also the critical pressure is the 72 atmospheres 72.9 atmospheres that is at its critical temperature and that isotherm we can see it critical pressure also above critical pressure the gas is here we are heating the small portion of gas and let the gas be cooled at the same pressure then the temperature and the volume both will decrease both will decrease along y z first we are heating the gas at constant volume then we are cooling it at the same pressure at z the temperature become 21.5 or less than 31.1 degree celsius and where the carbon dioxide exists as purely liquid during this transition from gas to liquid there has never been more than one phase present at any time as the temperature is decreased from y to z the volume of the gas decreases gradually till the molecules are close enough to cause their condensation into liquid state the process of transition from gaseous state to liquid state or vice versa is therefore regarded as continuous this is the principle of uh, the petroleum gas we are liquefying by applying pressure thus from this concept of critical constant we can realize that there is no fundamental difference between the so called permanent gases such as hydrogen oxygen nitrogen etc and temporary gases such as carbon dioxide chlorine ammonia etc the difference lies only in the fact that the permanent gases have very low critical temperatures much below the ordinary range of temperature the so called temporary gases have critical temperatures well within the range of ordinary temperature by this i am concluding the lecture hope you get an idea about the critical constants of a gas thank you very much